Hey guys, Meteor Ronald Chris Tomer here on this Thursday. Merry Christmas to everybody joining uh, on this uh, this forecast. I appreciate it. Here's a live view. We'll go back to California where the big storm system continues. This is up at Mount Rose. You can see the wind and the snow continuing. In fact, heavy snow continues into tomorrow morning. So we have another full day of this ahead. They're already reporting two to three feet of new snow up there around the Mount Rose area. Mammoth is uh, on equal footing. Very heavy snow continues there. They're reporting, let's see, 28 inches so far. And snow continues. Look at the woolly cam there at the main lodge. Snow continues to fall. Um, hopefully everybody's already in position at these places and can enjoy the snow if they open up some of these lifts. Okay, let me take you to uh, Jackson Hole. So looking at the interior Rockies here, it's very warm. I've been mentioning this the last few days. Utah, Wyoming, Colorado, warmer than normal for this time of the year. Actually, Jackson is reporting six to seven inches of new snow in the last 24 hours. But uh, look at the temperatures. So at the summit, it's 25. Uh, Mid-mountain, 33. At the base, 39. That's about what it was when we checked in on these numbers yesterday. And that's what I expected. I think those freezing levels now will stay about where they're at. And then later today, they're going to start to drop into tomorrow as some colder air begins to move in. But today's another warm day across most of the interior Rockies, for sure. Um, here's radar across the west. So getting blasted there in California, very heavy rain there, and of course snow in the high Sierra. And it's sending these waves into the interior, a little bit crossing uh, northern Utah. But the problem is that we're seeing, again, very warm air with high rain snow lines. And I think Alta is reporting a couple of inches of new snow. That's, that's what I was forecasting as well. But the issue is that for the rest of the uh, the morning into the midday, it's just too warm to really accumulate anything big. Your prime period, though, doesn't actually arrive until tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow night. And another wave right there kind of crossing north into the, uh, the Tetons. So still seeing action across the Tetons. Um, let me show you uh, water vapor. And boy, this is impressive this morning. Look at the spin. So there's the wave moving through the interior, but look at the spin there on the back side of this trough and in this trough with this area of low pressure just hammering the, uh, um, the high Sierra. Now eventually this uh, storm system will move in and that's when we're going to see the prime period for snow in Utah, in Colorado, and that's going to happen 26 into 27. And that will drag in some colder air. So like I was saying, high freezing levels today. Uh, and then they're going to start to come down. All right, let me show you my bullet points, and this will really help to uh, kind of paint the picture. So we've got the big storm continuing in California. Look at the rain snow line, though, in Tahoe. Starting at about 7,000 today, it will be falling to 5,000 over the next 24 to 48 hours. So colder air kind of filtering in. Idaho, initially it's going to be very high, and that should read 8,000, 8K, and that'll fall to 5,000 over the next 24 to 48 hours. And that mainly in Idaho would happen overnight tonight into tomorrow. Um, Utah, very high today, falls to 7,000 over the next 24 to 48 hours. Colorado, uh, we've got freezing up at uh, Treeline already this morning. Very warm, exceptionally warm, but it will also fall um, overnight into tomorrow. And Montana, Wyoming, same kind of thing. It's high, it's about 8,000 feet uh, today, but it will fall between tonight and tomorrow. Now, the prime period in the Wasatch, if you're curious, is not until tomorrow afternoon into the morning of the 27th. That's when I think if you're planning out your skiing or your powder forecast, the best powder, we've got to bring in colder air. So that has to coincide with the front. and That comes in tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow night, into the morning hours on the 27th. Here's your 15 day if you're curious about that for total snow, Mammoth Vale, Snowmass, Park City, Alta. Here are your best odds of accumulating snow if you're looking at dates. Uh, there's Colorado, Tahoe, Utah, Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, Interior, BC. So again, um, in Utah, you've got that mix potential today with warm temps, then the prime period, and, um, and then another little shot comes in on the very back side. Um, evening of 27, afternoon 27, into the morning of 28. In Colorado, light today, mainly western slope, 
but one just really running into warm air. And so you have to shave down some of the forecast totals as a result of that warm air. And then your prime period in Colorado is 1227 into the morning of 1228. That coincides with colder air coming in and the front with the lift. And then another shot of moderate to heavy, 1-2, and also 1-3. All right, let's look at the forecast radar and play this out in time. So starting this up at 11 a.m. Mountain Standard today on Christmas. There's the wave through the interior. There's the main low back in California. All right, let me push this ahead. All right, there we are at uh, 5 p.m. Mountain Standard. Here we are 5 a.m. Uh, Friday Mountain Standard. Uh, there's 11 a.m. All right, here's 5 p.m. Mountain Standard on Friday, uh, December 26th. So Look at the front right here, diving into the Wasatch. So colder air will be coming in. You've got lift. And so, again, afternoon 26, night of 26 into 27. Um, that's going to be, I think, the best opportunity to pick up snow across the Wasatch, widespread snow. And then, of course, that front is going to march its way into Colorado. Watch it happen. Look at there. So there we are, 5 a.m. Mountain Standard on Saturday. You've got good lift entering in colder air into the central and northern mountains of Colorado, probably still snowing across the Wasatch. Uh, let's move ahead. There's 11 a.m. Mountain Standard on Saturday. There's your front barreling through. Snow continues, Tetons and Wasatch. There's 5 p.m. There is late Saturday. There's early Sunday. There's 11 a.m. Mountain Standard on Sunday. Now, by the time we get to 11 a.m. Mountain Standard on Sunday, December 28th, it's over. It's done at that point. As you can see, everything has cleared um, the area. All right, a quick time height here for snow mass skier in Colorado and western Colorado, Pitkin County. Um, so you're looking at a slice right through the atmosphere, all the vertical layers, all the way up to the jet stream. It's a three-day forecast. So you start here and you move in this direction into the future. What do I notice right away? Well, whatever we've got around today on Christmas is going to be light. There's really no depth to it. There's not much green and it's kind of a southwest wind. So that, that really doesn't favor a lot of areas um, in the central mountains of Colorado. Then you've got a dry pocket. Um, late 25 into 26 and then here comes the next batch of moisture and again this is probably the best opportunity to accumulate snow through most of the central and northern mountains of Colorado and that happens uh, essentially uh, late on the 27th well on the 27th through the 28th into the early morning hours of the 28th so mainly on the 27th that's kind of the bottom line so we'll have to wait so it's not today and it's not tomorrow morning. Okay, atmospheric pressure anomalies in the middle of the atmosphere. So this is 1227 and you can see here comes the front with lower than normal pressures swinging through the Rockies. So late 26, 27 Wasatch on the 27th in Colorado. All that moves through. And then we move to, this is New Year's Day 1-1 higher than normal pressures across a lot of the central Rockies, lower than normal pressures, northern Rockies, and that's the way it's going to shake out. And this is potentially something good. This is Saturday 1-3. This is indicating a big drop in pressures across the west. If this verifies, we're talking colder uh, air and also widespread snow by 1-3. Hoping that's the case. Let me show you a comparison though. This is for New Year's Day. Here's the comparison. We looked at the operational. Here are your higher pressures. And here's your AI interpretation of that. And you know what? They're both in really good agreement at this point um, with higher than normal pressures across a lot of the central Rockies. Okay, let's go with the total precipitation over the next seven days. Still a lot yet to fall. When you see those reds, that's two inches or more of liquid. Um, and so wherever you see the yellows, that's always a key break point. That's an inch of liquid. That's about a foot of snow or more, at least a foot of snow. And you can see that's the case. There are a lot of Idaho, the Tetons, uh, potentially into parts of the, um, of Northern Utah into the Wasatch. And of course, a lot of the high Sierras included within that, the Cascades, 
parts of Interior BC and the Coastal Range. Let me show you a quick 10 to 1 seven day uh, total accumulation here. This takes us all the way through New Year's Day. So where you see the, uh, the deep purples, that's at least six inches of snow, 10 to one. Um, bright pinks, at least a foot, and the whites, that's at least two feet. And where do I see the whites? I see those across the High Sierra. And that's primarily it. Everybody else may be in the very highest peaks of central to northern Idaho, but everybody else is below that mark. Um, let's change the vantage point. Here's the southwest. We're going to see a lot of rain sweep in here over the next seven days. Look at all that heavy rain, even down into Los Angeles, Los Angeles County. Look at it, serious amounts of rainfall. A lot of that happens right now. It's on the front end. A lot of what you see up here in the high Sierra is happening now. It's on the front end of this forecast. In Colorado, 10 to 1 snow over the next seven days. There's a couple waves, um, but most of it happens um, right there between, uh, well, basically on the 27th. And what you see here with the front across, potentially a little bit of snow in Denver in the front range, that happens. Let's just let this run again. That's mainly between Saturday night into Sunday morning, so late on the 27th, very early into the 28th, as the front barrels through and colder air comes in. But deep purple's at least six inches, bright pinks would be a foot. Look at it mainly, you know, kind of around that six inch mark. Let's look at my numbers. Um, so here's what I've got. Basically today through tomorrow. So totals by late 1226. You're still looking at anywhere from two to three feet up here in the High Sierra. That's on top of what you've already received. Now in the Wasatch, uh, these numbers all had to go, I had to go on the lower end up here through the I-80 corridor, Park City, Deer Valley, up to Snow Basin, Powder Mountain. I'd say two to six, uh, but the limiting factor again is going to be the warm air. Now I went six to eight up here, Solitude, Brighton, out to Snowbird, but keep in mind that six to eight is not happening until afternoon, evening of 26 into the morning hours of the 27th. So, I mean, what you see here overall across Utah really doesn't start to accumulate until the afternoon of the 26th. Yes, you might get a little bit today, but most of this is, is afternoon, evening, 26th into the morning of 27th. Colorado, barely anything, 1 to 2, western slope. Look at this, great stuff up here through the Tetons, 8 to 10 between today and tomorrow. Uh, 8 to 10 up here in Idaho, uh, what is that, 3 to 6 up there into BC, and potentially 6 to 12 up there in the Pacific Northwest. Phase 1. Let's go to Phase 2. This is 1227 through New Year's Day. So in the Wasatch, um, another, uh, another 4, 5, 6 inches up there through uh, Snow Basin, Park City, Deer Valley, and, and, and the, the real factor that aids all of this is the colder air that comes in. And most of what you see here accumulates uh, early on 27. So it's 26 into 27. Uh, so another 8 there through Alta, Snowbird, Solitude, Brighton, 6 to 8 inches, um, essentially. And then in Colorado, you've got that front that comes through on 27. That's when you that's when most of this is going to accumulate. Um so it's good to see that. Uh, and again, a little bit down in Denver, a tiny bit, through late 27 into early 28. Another four to six up here um, through parts of the Teton. So if I back this up, let's just say eight there at Jackson Hole, period one, and another five. So we're looking at at least a foot up there on top of what you've already got there in the Tetons. Um, another three, four, five, six up there through Montana, Idaho. Into, into BC and the Pacific Northwest, six to seven, and you're completely done in the uh, the Sierra by this by this point. So backing this up again, let's just go six to eight, little and big Cottonwood Canyons there in Utah, and six to eight in period two as well. So anywhere from a foot to 16 inches, yet to yet, yet to fall in the prime period. Um, looking at the Northeast, the numbers have backed off a little bit, certainly versus yesterday. Over the next seven days, we're not looking at the bright pinks where they were yesterday. So the numbers have decreased. My forecast shows that. Totals through the end of 1-1. One, one. 
looking at potentially uh, 6 to 12 over most of the uh, the forecast uh, area through uh, New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine, roughly, with the bigger numbers up here in the northern tier. Mount Washington, Jay Peak, Whiteface, uh, Snow Ridge, Stowe, and Tremblant. So let's go back to the big map across the west where we'll end this on this Christmas day. Um, that's what we've got today, tomorrow, to look forward to. And then on 1227 through 1-1, um, basically everything slides across the Rockies at that point. Guys, thanks for tuning in here on this Christmas Day. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a wonderful day with friends and family. Take care.